Hi everybody, Bean Maestro 22 here. Today we are out in the shop and I want to show you a couple things. There's a lot of talk about N95 masks and surgical masks and respirators and what the heck is all this stuff? Well, most people don't know. Most people on the news giving you information about it don't know either. N95 is the type of rating on a mask. We're not going to get into how technical it is, but it's a good quality mask. It will block most things. Industrial N95 masks are different than surgical and stuff you'd use in the hospital that's also rated at N95. There are some differences. With some of the emergency laws passed in the United States, industrial N95 masks can be used for medical situations. And if you remember early on, that gave the medical professionals a whole extra supply of masks to use when they were running short. And really quick on this whole shortage of whether it's masks or medicine or anything else, it makes you really consider your supply chains and where things are manufactured. Especially if it's an American or a domestic manufacturing company making it overseas, then realizing, hey, we made it overseas with our design and we can't get it here because the local country is holding it or blocking it or confiscating it. Enough said about that. So today we're looking at an industrial N95 mask. There are several of them out there. This is just an example of one. Currently the government is saying, no, don't wear an N95 mask. Leave it for the medical professionals. You can just get by with a surgical mask. And this here is no secret. If you have a surgical mask without an N95 rating, it is not made to protect you. It is made to protect the people around you. So I guess we're going on the assumption that everybody's diseased, that you're diseased, don't disease anybody else. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's really just the placebo effect. I feel better. I'm wearing a mask. I'm protected. <laughs> yeah, okay. Those around you might be protected, but you doing you a lick of good, right? And I am sick and tired of seeing these pictures and videos online and on TV of these people wearing their masks over their mouth and not their nose. If it doesn't cover how you breathe, it ain't going to do you any good. But I digress. The average person doesn't know how to wear a mask. They've never been trained in how to wear a mask. If the mask does not fit snugly and securely around your face, then what good is it going to do if air and viruses and particles and other weird stuff can get around the mask and then into your respiratory system? And this is why people who wear a mask for a living get fit tested, get properly trained. It's a requirement. You have to be trained, I think, at least annually, depending on what industry you're in, maybe even more frequently. And part of this thing with people who have no idea what to do with the mask is why you see people wearing it wrong, wearing it over their forehead, cutting a hole in it to stick a cigarette through their mask. I've always liked that one. I was at the store the other day and I saw somebody wearing one of those full face scuba masks. <laughs> I mean, I got several of them, but you're not going to catch me wearing one out in public. I mean, unless I'm, you know, snorkeling or scuba diving, right? I mean, I guess if you put on that snorkeling mask and it has that tube that goes up the top and you were to put a filtering media, medium filters up in there, then yeah, that would be how you breathe. Maybe that would work. <laughs> Take an N95 mask, cut it into little squares, make your filter. <laughs> I don't know, but that is just ridiculous. As is this whole homemade mask thing about put a t-shirt or a jock strap or a pair of underwear over your face, you'll be protected. Well, no, but the joke's on you, right? Will it stop some particles of dust and dirt or pollen from getting in? Maybe, and if a virus or bacteria or disease was stuck on one of them particles, well, maybe it'll stop it. But at least for the rest of us who get to watch you walk around with a jockstrap on your face, well, you know, you're, you're brightening our day, so thank you. And with this whole mask thing about we have to wear this mask to protect us, will it protect you? Maybe. Will it protect the people around you? Maybe. But the only way you are going to make sure you do not get a virus or an airborne contaminant, I was going to say contagion, but I thought contaminant sounded better, is to be in a fully encapsulated suit with supplied air. And that would be a suit like this one. And you've probably seen suits like this before if you've seen these CDC videos of zombie virus outbreaks. Or was a movie called Outbreak? <laughs> or any other outbreak movie where zombies were 
included in it or not. And even last year, an American Horror Story Apocalypse, if you remember, they had two people walking in a suit like this. They just put them in the suit. They didn't have supplied air or anything. How were they breathing? Well, if they were breathing without supplied air, then the suit wasn't airtight and they were not protected. Once again, it's an example of somebody who's wearing a piece of personal protective equipment, PPE, who has no idea how it works or even how to do it. So leave the PPE wearing to the people who are trained. Because if you zipped yourself into a suit like that, you would die of suffocation. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have supplied air. And your supplied air could consist of a backpack air bottle system, an SCBA, or it could actually be an airline system, but that's even more technical, getting into a sealed suit. You see those a lot in movies, too. And really quick, if you are out and about wearing some type of mask or respirator, whether it's surgical mask or N95, you remember you're supposed to change these things frequently. I talked to somebody the other day who's been wearing the same surgical mask for the last week. At that point, I don't think it's doing you any good. If it's not capable of being cleaned, then... Oh, man, that, that would be bad. And if by some chance it actually was blocking contaminants from coming to you, it's going to get loaded up with it. So you have to clean it or dispose of it or... I don't know what you do. But you can't just put something over your, over your mouth when you walk around, then take it off and set it somewhere. Every time you touch something, you're going to wash your hands if, if your mask was contaminated. Are your hands now contaminated? Think of order of operations. It's like a math problem. Talk about germs. I've always been an anti-germ guy. I've always been a germaphobe. Diseases like this, I'm ready, right? You walk into a public restroom, you touch the door handle going in, and it's probably not contaminated at that point. I mean, it's not clean, but it's not really contaminated, right? You walk to the stall. You walk up to the stall where the turlet is. You open the door, you've touched it. Okay, your hands are now contaminated. You reach down, you touch your zipper. You open your zipper. Your zipper is now contaminated. You use the toilet, either standing up or sitting down, whatever you have to do. You, are you touching anything else in there with your already now contaminated hands? But even if they weren't, they are now contaminated because you touched something. You're done doing your business. You reach back. You flush the toilet. You've just touched that contaminated handle of the toilet, which everybody else before you has also touched. You zip up your pants once again, recontaminating your zipper or recontaminating your hands if you yeah, so. Then you open the door to get out of the stall, bam, you go and do the washing your hands, you do all that. And then you better grab a paper towel or something to open the door handle to get out of the bathroom because everything in there has been touched and then they touch that. Didn't matter that you washed your hands at that point, right? So let's say you're not using a stall. Let's say you're going right up to the urinal. The urinal? Yeah, the wall toilet for peeing in. And let's say you got into that restroom without having to touch any door handles. So, you know, at this point, you're, you're doing pretty good. You unzip. Okay, your zipper was still clean. Well, unless you've already used the bathroom prior to this in those pants. And I don't mean going to the bathroom in your pants. I mean, you know, going to the bathroom Wow, in those pants. Anyways, you know what I mean. You touch yourself, you do your business, then what do you do? You flush the toilet. Okay, handle was contaminated with somebody else, now it's contaminated with you and somebody else. You zip up your zipper, zipper's now contaminated, and then you once again have to figure out how to wash your hands, get a paper towel, and get out of there without recontaminating your hands. And at that point, I guess you can with the automatic faucets and automatic soap things and automatic paper towel things and take a paper towel and use it to open the door handle. And then you're out and about walking and then you reach down and adjust your zipper. Your once clean hands are now contaminated again. Contaminated with everybody who has touched that toilet handle before you and after it was last cleaned. So, if your zipper is now contaminated, you have to remember order of operations for the rest of the day or until you take those pants off and wash them. Well, if you just took the pants off, if you undid the zipper, bam, contaminated. Think about germs, think about order of operations. The next time you go into a public restroom, think about, you know, what are you touching and then what are you touching? Yeah, that'll give you something to think about. <laughs> so, unless you're going to be fully encapsulated with supplied air and not breathing what's around you, you know, there's things just out there that they're just out there. 
All right, so what do you think? Are you masking up or are you not masking up? Are you trying to social distance like they keep telling us to? Or do you think the whole thing's a crack? I'm somewhere in between. I mean, heck, the government just admitted yesterday that they have been inflating and pumping up the COVID-19 death numbers. That's right. Yes, you can get sick and you can get this virus and you can croak. I mean, people croak of the flu every year. It happens. It's sad, but it happens, right? But they are inflating the numbers, making it sound worse. The news is hyping it up because they're getting ratings. They're getting advertisers. They're look at us. Pandemic, COVID-19. It's all over the news. And these are so-called reputable institutions. Well, I mean like the radio news. Uh, no, the TV news does it too. Cable news, but they're not reputable institutions. I'm talking about, you know, the sort of supposed to be quality radio news. Because if you get your news and information from online or from cable news outlets, well, you already don't know what's going on anyways. So the government admitted that if there is a person in hospice with stage four lung cancer or renal failure, and they, you know, they got days to live anyways, and they pass on to meet their maker, as we all will someday, they test them, oh, they had the coronavirus, we're going to count that death to coronavirus. New York just said, wow, we can't explain it. There's all these coronavirus deaths, but there's hardly any people dying of anything else. If you've been eating bacon for every meal for the last 50 years, you have a heart attack. You are just defib and they can't bring you back. This is clear. They can't bring you back. You croak. They test you. Oh, we had the coronavirus. Whoop, one more for the coronavirus. So, yeah, they're overinflating these numbers. They're trying to freak people out because it's good for business. But, yeah, stay disease-free. Stay safe. And if you're essential like me, I guess it's okay for me just to go on and do what I normally do because that's what my job involves, me just going and doing what I normally do. Yeah, it's pretty weird, right? Safe for me, but not other people. Oh, well, what are you going to do? At least they got toilet paper in the stores now, right? Never could explain why that was all gone. So leave your comments in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Are you wearing a mask? Do you not have a mask? Have you never heard of a mask? Are you wearing something, even a pair of underwear on your head? So I'll leave your comments in the comment section, as always. Thanks for watching. Beanmeister 22, the most dangerous man on YouTube.